Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 26. Uh, we're going to be doing some exercises on concurrency and parallelism, which is the stuff we've just been talking about in the last couple of videos. Uh, as usual, um, follow the link in the show notes to these exercises. I uh, encourage you to have a go yourself, but welcome to just follow along if you prefer, or welcome to skip these exercise videos and go back onto the lectures, which will be coming soon. Um, so, uh, let's go straight in to exercise C1, uh, which just says follow the instructions in the comments. So let's have a look at the code. It's the code in our one TF IDF directory. And there's a load of code in here. So let's first of all just review what's in here and then we'll talk about how we're going to tackle it. Um, okay. So, um, if we look at the directory structure, we've got this documents directory with some books inside it. And then we've got one one source code file and one cargo.toml that we won't particularly look at. So we're in main.rs, the main source code file. And what it first does is creates a um, slice of string, comma, string pairs, uh, which are just the name of a book and then the entire contents of that book, just included directly <coughs> as um, uh, Amsenstra, um from that txt file so this is a lovely thing you can do in rust you can just have a huge long string as part of your source code which is just brought in from this text file so we've got four books is that right five books one two three four five books um uh yeah so all the books in that directory of course okay and then we've got a few functions defined um but let's start at the end and let's look at the main function so the main function the, the kind of eventual um, result of all of our code is going to be we're going to have a search function which takes in a search term and on those documents that we just saw getting created and the number of results we want to get back and it's going to it's going to have this results thing inside the the answer which you're going to be able to iterate through it's going to give pairs of scores and names and then we're going to print out name comma score and we're expecting it to say Romeo and Juliet scores 209, nearly 210, and Little Women scores 4.2. Um, and uh, if we'll we'll figure this out, but my understanding is that it's going to be that the score is about like how much, how many times is Romeo mentioned? Maybe as a proportion of the the size of the document or something like that. So there's a little bit of mentioning of Romeo and Little Women, a lot of mentioning of Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. That's my expectation, but I haven't read the code yet to figure that out. So let's see how search is implemented. And there's quite a bit to look through before we start doing the exercises. But anyway, search is all done for us. So search takes in a query, um, list of documents, which is these pairs of strews. So these, this one, this right-hand side is the contents of the document. And the first one is the name. A number of results, and it returns a, a search result queue, which is defined up above. And what it does is it finds out the frequencies are of all words in all those documents. Is that right? Yeah. So it, it, it so it takes the documents that we've been given. It makes a parallel iterator over them. So there's five of them. So all, all five will potentially run on different CPU. And then for each one, um, it just gives the the book the book contents. This t dot one is like because because documents is a slice of um, an array of pairs. So it's saying for each one, give me the second thing in the pair. Uh, uh, so we get we've got a parallel iterator over the contents of the books, which we then pass into this document frequency function, which we're going to have to figure out what it does. My guess is what it does is gives you back a hash map of word to um, word to one to say, um, no, you get of, let's check what it does. <laughs> so document frequency is, um, plural, wasn't it? No, document frequency. Singular. Okay, so what does document frequency do? For each word, in how many of the documents does it occur? So we're, we're returning a hash map of words to whether they occur 
No. What is this? How many of the documents it occurs? Okay. So it's literally just uh, uh, returning a hash map of word to how many documents does this word occur in? Okay. All right. That's kind of surprising. So now we've got document frequencies here. We're going to do another parallel iterator through the documents. And we're going to fold, which means um, combine together pairs of things, I think. Let's just check what fold does. It takes in the, the identity, which is like the thing we start off with, and then an operation to do, to fold these things together. Um, and the operation f is a function which takes in um, a, a t and an item. So it's basically a, yeah, id is going to be yeah id is a function which returns a t. So we start off with a t, and then every time around the loop, we combine the thing we got from id or whatever we're currently on with another item, and then give back another t. And the final answer is, um, I guess, iterable or something. Let's see what, see how it's used. Yeah, because then, yeah, because then we, we, um, we then call reduce on it. So it must be something kind of iterable. So we start off with a, uh, we, this is a closure. So we start off with just an, a new search result queue. And so an empty search result queue and with its, which knows its size. And then the operation we do is, um, state, which I presume state is the search result queue. Yep. So we've already got a search result queue, um, which is empty when we start. And for each document, we get the name and the document. We find out the term frequencies, which is like how many, for, so this, we're talking about one document now. So how many times is each word mentioned? So this will be a hash map of like word to number of times it's mentioned in that document. And then we score the document using the term frequencies, the document frequencies, and the query. And then we push the score and the name into our results. So this is like the results that we're expecting. Um, this is in the format we're expecting, which is like a, um, basically a, um, like a map of, um, of, of name and score, no score, name to score. Um, and then we reduce it by just like appending. So basically, this, because we're using a parallel iterator here, this stuff might happen in parallel. We might get multiple search result queues. So we need to combine these search result queues together into one search result queue. And that's our answer. So it's all, um, surprisingly complicated for a relatively simple, um, operation because it's parallel. So we've got to do, we've got to separate out the kind of score all the documents step from combining together multiple search result queues where we've scored some of the documents but not all. Um, all right, so score document we've got to think about, term frequency we've got to think about. Um, first of all, let's think about, so it's, let's, well, let's briefly look at what search result queue does. It's kind of just uh, like a, a VEC kind of thing. So inside a search result queue is a VEC of, um, I guess this is a score and a name, maybe. And this is the number of results. So you can create one, um, and it makes a vec with the right size. Um, and then there's this sort and truncate helper function, which just sorts the results by um, score, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, and make sure that we only have the right the right number. Yeah, so highest score, highest score first. Um, and then you can also put things into it and uh, uh, stick two together. So pushing things into um, the thing is just, first of all, it checks whether you've got room because there's a maximum size to this thing. Uh, if the score is higher than something, I guess this is like if the score is high enough, um, this is like where do we insert it? No, no, it's if the score is high enough than, if the score is higher than something, then, um, if something, all right, so this is, okay, gosh, um, this is a complicated piece of code for what I think is quite a simple thing to do. So what it's saying is, 
get hold of the first result inside us. Uh, if we match sum, so as in if there is something in us, um, in the first position, then if we are greater than the first position, I'm guessing that's saying, then higher score is true. So in that case, we push the results. So if there's space already, or if we've got a higher score than the the first thing in our results list, I think that is. That's interesting. Why a higher score than the first thing in our results list? I would have thought it would be the last thing in our results list. Anyway, so based on some conditions, we put the we put the score into the list, and then we sort and truncate to make sure the list is correctly things. And then this one is just um, if we've got another um, search result queue, then combine the two together and use sort and truncate to make sure uh, it's all in the right order and the right size. I'm a bit concerned there's a bug in higher score, but I'm not going to fix it here. I probably just misread this code, which is really confusing me. Okay, so um, maybe we'll think about that offline and see if we can send a patch if there is a bug. All right, so the score document function was the next thing we, we should look at. So the query is like, what am I searching for? Term frequencies is how often does this thing happen in this, how this word happen in this document? Document frequencies is how often does this word, like how many documents does this word happen in? Um, yeah, okay, so n is the length, number, like number of words. We split up the query into separate words. Interesting, okay. And then for each word, we say, um, find the term frequency of that word in this document. So how many times does this word appear in this document? Get it as a F64. And then get hold of the something to do with how many documents it appears in. And then, okay, so basically, I don't think we need to care too much about the exact calculation this does, but it's scoring the document to say, um, for this search term, how important is this document? So I guess the word, I guess the point is, the word and is going to score is going to appear in lots of documents, lots of times. Um, so it's not very unique that this document contains it. So it gets a lower score. I guess that's what it's saying. Um, but I don't care the exact score. The point is, given the term frequencies and the document frequencies, we get back a score for this document. And our job is to calculate the term frequencies and the document frequencies. Okay, so there's a function called document frequency, uh, a function called term frequency, and then some helper functions. So first of all, let's look at document frequency. So for each word, in how many documents does it occur? And we've just got a big to-do in here telling us we need to implement that. So we'll implement that. We've got this function called term occurrence, which just says um, for each word in the document, um, insert an entry into the hash map with a value of one. Um, and if it recurs multiple times, it's still just one. I guess that's what that means. And then combine occurrences means given two hash maps, add up their counts on the right-hand side for words that overlap. Otherwise, just take either the left or the right. We'll get into this. We'll write unit tests for this stuff so we understand it. And then this is the kind of, the, the, the one we're expecting to write, I guess, which is um, for each word in document, how many times does it occur in that document? And it's, it's giving us a hint here to use the hash map entry method, which we'll, we'll do. Uh, and so the outline of this function so far is to split by white space. So now we're iterating through all the words um, and then do a fold. Uh, and we've got to define. So the fold starts with an empty hash map. And then for every word, we've got to like modify that hash map to make it work the way it should work, which will be basically adding one to the entry. And we're back to the top. Okay, so we're going to take a break there. We haven't actually done anything yet, but we've reviewed the code for this exercise. And um, my first instinct here is to try and write um, some unit tests for these individual functions. Make sure we understand how they're supposed to work. 
um, get each of those functions working, and then with any luck, when we combine them all together, the result will look like what we're expected to get, which is the search results. But yeah, this is far too high level um, a test for me. It's just that these two things happen. There's so much stuff going on underneath. I want to write little unit tests for each of my functions. So back soon. Okay, we're back. And you can see I've been playing with my fonts. Sorry. Um, so let's write ourselves a test. So we're going to make a mod module called tests. And let's actually call this tests of term frequency because we're probably going to separate them out. Just because otherwise they'll be right at the bottom of the page and it'll be confused. So I'm going to write a test. Which is going to, well, so what's term, how's term frequency going to work? For each word in the document, how often does it occur in the document? Um, so it's counting how many times each word occurs. So let's just say for an empty document, empty document produces empty hash map. Do we need to like, I guess we're in a module called test for term frequency. So that's probably okay to just name it like that. Um, so let's run term frequency on an empty document. And let's just assert that that equals an empty hash map, which I think, I think we can do with this. And let's see if we can run those tests. Um, interesting. Um, how have we not got cargo? Um, all right, give me a second while I figure out what's up with my Rust install. Okay, we're back. I've been, I've recently moved to Debian and XFCE. I don't know what I did to, um, my cargo setup, but um, somehow I lost cargo from my path, but we're back. Okay, so um, there is a compile error um, because we haven't brought in HashMap. Let's see if we can get our compile errors to appear in the editor. Looks good. We'll just let that build. But it's saying we not, we haven't brought in hash map, so let's just bring in. Oh well, here we go. It's doing it for us. Here we go. Import hash map. I guess I want to use super here, like so. All right, let's try again. Okay, um, one test ran the test we were expecting, the only test we've written so far. So an empty document gives us uh, an empty hash map. So now let's, I guess, let's test that like a few words give us um, a count of one for each one. Um, can count single words. So let's just try... Um, the old classic foo bar, Baz, gives us a hash map um, that contains, well, let's make it from a slice of pairs, right? This is a, this is the way I like to make a hash map, I think. He said confidently, and now I'm worried that it won't work. So we're going to have a pair of, um, foo comma one and I need to two owned it because um, uh, because it needs to be a string not a str so it's going to have a foo and a bar what have I pressed and a baz hopefully we're going to get that aligned for us in a second there we go right so um, if we give it a document that contains foobar and baz, it should give us back a hash map, hash map with a count of one for each of foobar and baz. So hopefully this test will fail. 
Um, something went wrong. Uh, you can't make a hash map. Yeah, like I was saying. <laughs> you can't make a hash map of string integer from a slice of pairs of string and integer. Why not? I thought you could. Um, there's some way you can make a hash map from... Maybe it's... No, you can't do... If you can't do from, you can't do into, I'm pretty sure. So let's just do ourselves a check. Look up our hash map. Sure there's a way you can make one. Well, you can make one from an array. Why was I trying to make one from a slice when I could just make one from an array? How about that? Is it as easy as that? Removing the ampersand? I need to get rid of all these warnings. They're really making it hard to read the app. Oh, okay. It should be a hash map of str. Yep. Okay. So I was completely lying when I said we needed the two owns. We can make our test look a lot nicer. Because if we look at the return type of um, term frequency, it's a hash map of str, comma, u size. Um, because it's actually references to bits of the original document. So the implicitly here, the lifetime of this reference is the same as the lifetime of the, the string reference we passed in. So that looks nicer. And our test failed as we expected because it hits uh, to do. So let's, let's first of all, um, do the naivest thing we can to make this test pass. So we, the do we pass in the document, we split it. Um, you know what I could really do with this being formatted more nicely. So let's copy from one of the other exercises. Um, somewhere I copied in a Rust format, I'm sure. Yeah, maybe my quizzer. Yeah, here we are. So let's have a Rust format dot .toml in this project. I'll just show you what's in there. All I have is max width 80, which makes it easier for me to read the code in this, this editor. I might need to like, maybe if I just can't go from it here, it'll work. No. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. It still doesn't format comments because that's a, like a nightly feature. Um, so let's just manually format these comments so that they don't break my eyes. Okay. Not sure why it's a nightly feature. Anyway. Now they kind of fit on the screen. I'm not so troubled. All right, so let's make this test pass. So the test says um, there should be a count of one for each one. So we're folding it, um, starting from an empty hash map. So I could have used hash map default here instead of hash map new, by the way. It's the same thing. Um, and we every time we get a word, we, we, we call this function, which takes in a hash map, takes in the word. And we're going to insert an oops. We're going to insert into that hash map uh, the word and the value one. That should be enough to make the first test pass, I think. Got to fix those warnings. Couldn't compile. Oh, all right. So we're inserting into the hash map, but then we're not returning the hash map because the fold function requires us to return the the kind of modified thing that we folded into. Got to fix those warnings. All right, so um, now our second test passes, but we know our next test is going to fail because we haven't really implemented it the way we wanted to. But let's fix some of these warnings before we go any further because it's really making it difficult to read. 
So, all right. Combiner currencies is never used. Uh, I mean, we could just comment all this stuff out until we do it. Is combiner currencies really never used? Okay, it's not. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess it's because we need to implement the stuff that uses it. So let's just comment out, um, let's comment out combiner currencies only. That will get rid of some warnings. There's still a few more. So there's a warning that document is not used here. We'll get rid of that. Um, and also here. And term occurrence is also never used. So I guess we're going to get our heads around what those things mean in a second. All right, no more warnings. Um, okay, when well we've got... Um, a warning here about our the resolver that we're using. So we're, for some reason we're using um, workspace, some kind of wrong workspace thing in. So are we in a workspace here? I don't think we're in a workspace here. We're just in a. Um, in a package, but I guess in the somewhere above we've got some kind of workspace definition. And that yeah, there's a cargo to tomal in there. And I guess that has some kind of workspace edition that is confusing it. I mean result sorry, resolver is what I mean. Or is it uh I guess this is defaulting to the default resolver because there's no Rust Edition in here, maybe? It, it's a little confusing why it's moaning at me, but it's um, it's sufficient to upset me. So let's put let's put this in the root manifest. Or in the root cargo.toml, I think. What if we put that here? Will that make our lives better? No, that didn't help. That's because I said workspace dot workspace. No? Oh, I should have just said resolve. Okay. What I should have done is that, maybe. There we go. All right. So I don't understand that, but it was annoying me. I think basically at that the workspace level, it was defaulting to use the uh, original way that Cargo uses to find dependencies. But then we had the uh, 2021 edition specified in our cargo.toml in this directory, which means works that uses the new resolver. And so it was complaining about an inconsistency there. So now I've made it consistent. So I could have probably said edition equals 2021 in that top level cargo.toml, and that would have also prevented. That was a huge waste of time. All right, so uh, we've nearly implemented this function. Um, we've got one more test probably to write, which is when, they, when there's more than one instance of a word, we should um, provide a count of two. So there's two bars and three foos. So the count of bars should be three, the count of foo should be two. And this should be can count repeated words. Like so. Now this test should fail. It does, because it's always one. So now we need to improve our implementation. And we can use the hint that they've given us that we should use the entry method. So what you can do with HashMap, which is really cool once you get your head around it, is you can get get hold of the entry for a particular entry. Uh, and that returns... Um, that returns this entry thing which is either like it was missing or um, it was present. And then there's methods on this entry thing that let us do stuff. So we can say and modify. 
So we can, if it exists, we can modify it like this. And that gives us, that we're allowed to pass in a closure there, which here, which takes in a mutable reference to the right hand side of the hash map, which in this case is a U size. So then we can modify it by saying add one. So if it already exists, add one to, to the count that's there. <coughs> and if it doesn't exist, we can do or insert one. And just like that. Now, does that return the hash map or something useful like that? No. So we still need this extra line that returns the hash map afterwards. So now we're saying, find the entry for this word. If it exists, modify it by adding one to the right hand side. Otherwise, insert a one on the right hand side. With any luck, our test will pass. Yeah, we did it right. We did it right. Okay, good. So I think term frequency is now working. I think, I think that's an implementation of it. We could have done a for loop. But yeah. All right. So they, they've laid out the way they want that implemented. All right, so I guess the next um, thing is to think about, like, why it, why does combine occurrences exist? We have a description of what it does. Um, and um, I'll just make it easier to read. And a description of why we're not using a parallel iterator here. Um, but basically, combine occurrences takes two hash maps and combines them together into one. So it seems pretty straightforward to implement. So maybe we just go ahead and implement it and then think about why it exists. And then this one is, again, there's a good description of what it does. We can probably implement it before we think about how to use it. Um, so they're, they're kind of guiding our implementation. I would Generally, I'd prefer... Um, to, to like pretend things exist. Um, it's the structure and interpretation of computer programs approach. You write, you, you write some high level code that pretends your utility functions exist. And then later you worry yourself with how to write those utility functions. Tests for combined occurrences. Um, but yeah, given that they're kind of guiding us by writing, like telling us what utility functions to write first, they kind of done that job for us, I guess. So this test is going to say two empty, two empty hash maps produce an empty hash map, right? Do you like my new font? I do. Okay, so we're going to say. Assert that if you call combine occurrences with two empty hash maps, then the answer comes back as an empty hash map. Like so. Let's see if that test passes. That should already pass. Why should it already pass? Oh, I see. Oh, it already passes in this case because we don't hit the to-do because the fold doesn't have anything to do. Right, good. Um, so let's do something a bit clever, cleverer, like uh, a non-overlapping hash maps. Let's do that. Non-overlapping hash maps combine. So let's make a, a hash map which contains um, foo, comma two, and another hash map which contains. I guess we should have two things in here just to make sure that works. Bar, comma five, and. Baz. I mean, I'm hoping that the words foo bar and baz are sufficient to test our code. When when we've combined those together, it should combine into. Um, I guess we could copy these. Would that be easier? Foo, and then here we could copy all of this stuff.
Foo bar bears with the, the count still preserved. So that test should fail. Yep, panicked because we, there's a to-do in there. And I actually think when I implement this, I'm a little bit concerned that it it's going to... I'm going to immediately implement it fully. So I better write another test now, which says overlapping hash maps combined. So we could do, there's a foo in here and there's a bar in here. With another six. And when we combine those together, we should have 11. So this is how I understand combiner currencies. Let's double check that I've understood it right. Combine the counts from maps A and B. If the words in both maps add up their counts, otherwise just use the one from one. Fine. So I think we've got tests that now specify the behavior reasonably well of how combined occurrences works. Um, there's some, maybe some edge cases like what if there's a zero in there, although I don't think we'll encounter that in the real world. Um, yeah. So let's try and let's just double check that test runs and fails. Yeah. So both those tests fail. So how do we actually implement this? So we've got um, a hash map. We're looping through the values of the hash map building up a new, so yeah, we, we're folding. So we're looping through all the things in hash map B, starting from hash map A, we provide that, provide that as the hash map, and then we combine it with one of the entries from B, and then we return a new hash map to continue with. So it's going to look something like, we're going to return the hash map once we've modified it. And we're going to do hash map dot. I guess we're going to get the entry for the word again. I guess it's going to work pretty much the same time, same as last time. Get out of the entry of the, for the word. Um, if it exists, we're going to modify it by adding its count, adding count to it. So the entry is going to be a reference to one of these entries and we're going to modify it. By adding count. If it doesn't exist, we're going to or insert count. I think that might work. We need a semicolon. Uh, I think that might be good enough. We have a warning. Oh, the warning is the combiner currency is not used yet. So, right, we'll get to that. So, running that, um, all our tests pass. So, it looks like we implemented combiner currencies correctly. Um, so let's move on to implementing term occurrence. And they, they haven't done so much work for us this time. I guess they think we're ready for a bit more. So we're going to write some tests for this. What did I, did I pluralize this or not? It feels wrong now. Oh, that doesn't have a bracket. Feels wrong to pluralize this. Normally I would call it, they call the module tests, but I called it, yeah, I did. I called it tests. Of, I guess this should be tests of term frequency, but fine. Um, so normally I call the module tests, which is why I've given it these, these modules really odd names. So we're going to write a test that checks that an empty document produces an empty hash map. I guess that's reasonable. So the reason I, I write this very um, trivial test first is to kind of just get me bootstrapped with I can um, I can actually call the function that I'm testing or stuff like that. Like just to get the structure of a test in my head that it's going to be call term occurrence. Whoops. Call term occurrence with an with something. And then compare it with something else. And I, I find it like getting a failing test, like in, I guess this, this code is pretty trivial, right? We're just calling a function. Um, oh gosh, this got, this test has the same name as another test. That's no good at all, is it? Um, I, that makes me confused. This is empty occurrences hash map. And let's just rename the other one as well. Oh, it's even, 
combined. No, that's got a different name already. It's the previous one that's got the same name. So this is a term frequency. So let's just say frequency hash map. Yeah, so this code is pretty trivial. So writing this trivial test may not have a great deal of value. But if in, if you imagine, if we, instead of calling term occurrence, we're doing some complicated setup to get ready to um, actually just run our code at all, writing a trivial test case and then writing the trivial implementation to make it pass can often um, help us just check that um, our... Um, our code is callable at all and that we can, we've got a way of writing tests that makes sense. So it can be really helpful. All right. We've got a failing test because we immediately hit this to do. So let's do the trivial thing we can to make that test pass. Just return an empty hash map. Now our test passes and we can write a more interesting test. So I guess the more interesting test will be um, multiple words are counted. Well, let's just say single individual words are counted. And that's going to be, so imagine we've got a document that contains foo, bar, and baz. It's going to give us a hash map, which we can make from an array. which is going to have foo and bar and baz. Uh, and they're all going to have a count of one because that's the that's what it says. It says map each word in the document to the value one. So that test is going to pass. But let's also, um, because again, I think our implementation is going to be pretty quick. Let's do repeated words. Repeated words are counted once. So if we've got more bars, more foos, uh, we still only get one out. Ah, this is wrong. And I like super to go here, which I haven't done above, so let's just fix that here as well. So normally I wouldn't use super. I find it... Um, it kind of obfuscates what stuff we're using. I'd rather have a, a full path of like create colon colon blah colon colon blah to say which stuff I'm using in a test. Um, because I, the test module is inside the real module. So I'm testing the stuff in the, the one, module one above. It kind of makes sense to me that we would just use super there. Okay. So let's run those tests and they both fail because we're just returning an empty hash map. So what we want to do is something very similar to what we did in term frequency, we want to split on the white space and then fold. And actually, I think we implemented this code when we were doing a trivial version of the other one. So split on the white space and then insert the word and the number one. So for every word we find in the document, Um, split, uh, like for every word we find in the document, uh, add to the hash map that word with a one. If it's already there, we just replace it and we don't care. So maybe that's not the most efficient way of doing it, but it, it works. All right. So our, those, all our tests are passing. So things are going well. Um, so now, uh, we want, we need to do document frequency, which says in how many of the documents does this word occur? And they're giving us a clue about how to implement this, which we'll follow blindly without thinking about whether that's the best way to do it. So, tests of document frequency. I would insert the word of at this point if I were, we're going to check this code in somewhere. I've become to regret the way I'm naming it. All right, so the first thing is we've got a bunch of documents which are each of which is like we can iterate 
We can iterate over them, parallel iterate over them, in fact, and each of them is going to be a str. So let's just say no documents. Uh, returns empty hash map. Another reason to write one of these trivial tests like this is it oh, sometimes there's an edge case where there's no documents or something which you might otherwise miss out. So it's quite nice to make sure it's handled. So that's just going to be a set equal document frequency of something you can iterate over that makes documents. So I'm guessing a, a slice can be parallel iterated, but I'm not sure, so we'll check that. Something, yeah, something that implements parallel iterator. So maybe I have to actually call par iter. We'll see. Um, and we're saying that returns the empty hash map. Um, and this should be um, an empty. We're always saying an em no documents, so an empty thing. And I guess we need to say in, uh, we need to say para iter on this. Can't call para iter on that. What about that? Yeah. So no. Oh. Okay, what if we make a vec? Otherwise, I'm going to have to look this up. How do we make something that's parallel iterable? What is parallel? What is this? Um, parallel iterator. So it's complaining about the size of str. Let's get this. Okay, so I've figured out my problems. Um, I swear I tried this earlier. <laughs> it didn't work. But anyway, if we make a vector, we can call into para iter. So I was calling para iter because that's what I've seen in all the examples. Uh, and what that gives you is a parallel iterator over references to all the things in the vector. Um, but given that the vector is going to be a vector of references to str, then we don't want references to references to str. We just want references to str. So we need to call into para iter, which gives us, which like takes ownership of that vector and therefore doesn't need to give us references to the things in the vector. So, um, I uh, bet you're glad you didn't have to watch me figure all that out. Um, by the way, that does mean that this is an unrealistic video, right? I actually spent longer um, fiddling about trying to understand that obscure corner than you're going to spend watching it. So, I mean, like, it's good for your viewing pleasure, but in terms of realism of um, how easy I found this exercise, just don't be put off if it takes you longer. Or it took you longer when you did it. All right, so I'm sure sometimes you get stuck on stuff that I don't and vice versa. All right, so that test passes. I mean, no, it doesn't, because I haven't implemented anything yet. Um, how is it, like, fine with me having another... Oh, I haven't saved this. So, right. <laughs> so that test fails because we haven't implemented it yet. So let's make th that test pass. Um... Uh, and we just, well, I said that it should be an empty hash map, so that should be straightforward to do. Fine. So, match e map each document to a hash map that maps words to whether they occur. Then reduce combining the counts. So, we're basically saying, how many documents does this word occur in? I think. Yeah, that's right. Um, all right, so our first test passes. Yes, so let's write another test, which is there's only one document. I guess that would be a good test case, wouldn't it? One document gives I get, it gives us uh, basically the term frequency, I think it was called. Is that what it's called? Term occurrence. Yeah. 
So, oh, where was I? Yeah, one document gives term occurrence. How do you spell occurrence? Another R. One R? How many R's? One R, fine. <laughs> At least I've spelled it with one R earlier. All right, so that means if we've got a vector, let's use the vec macro, which has one document in it, which is foobarbaz. Again, hopefully it's okay. It's going to give us back a hash map, which looks exactly like the term occurrence. Oh, I guess we should do another bar here, shouldn't we? Just to make sure. Um, we're going to do hash map from. And then, oh, I hate that. Uh, there's going to be one foo. Uh, and then one bar, because this is just term occurrences, and one bars. So we give it one document, it gives us back the results as if it just called term occurrence for that one document. Um, I guess we need a semicolon there. Um, so we can implement that by just calling term occurrence on the first document. Shall we do that? Um, so I guess we need to say, if there's any documents, if there's a document, um, then do something, otherwise return that empty hash map. And the something we want is called term occurrence on the document. Oh, hold on, this is a parallel iterator. How do you get things out of a parallel iterator? I don't know. Next. Map. Find. For each. Oh, let's figure this out. So, oh, there is a map. I thought it said there wasn't a map earlier. So, okay. So I guess we can't even get the first document. How are we going to do this? I guess we'll just, um, the reduce can just be trivial in some way, maybe. So given a, so we need to say, instead of saying, get me the first document, which seems like it's difficult to do, we need to say map over all the documents and for each document do term occurrence. And then We've already written the thing that we're going to use to reduce, which is called combine occurrences. So I think, I think the implementation is just going to be, um, some kind of empty hash map and then reduce occurrences, uh, combine occurrences like this. So this can be just, in fact, we don't need, we don't need a closure here. We can just say call the term occurrence. Um, oh, and I don't, maybe we don't want reduce, maybe we want fold. How does reduce work? It takes in an identity function. And so what's the difference between reduce and fold? Because we're using fold before, right? So why are we not using fold here? It says use reduce, but maybe we want. What's the difference? This might be interesting to find out. Um, oh, no, no, okay, yeah, we want reduce because we are actually returning an answer. So, um, so we, uh, for some reason, reduce takes a, a function to create that first thing. The first thing is going to be a hash map. And then we combine together all the hash maps with combined occurrences. We've already written the code, basically, is the nice thing about this. It does mean we're lacking a test. Um, because if we've got multiple documents, um, it's got to do something cleverer. Multiple documents have Occurrences combined, let's say. Combined. So this is going to be another document which has got a 
a quox in it and a foo. And the answer is going to be one document has, no, two documents have foo in, one document has bar in, one document has baz in, and one document has quox in it. That should be just a single u quox. Like so. And with any luck, that will work. All right, time for a break, and we'll continue after a bit. All right, and we're back, and we've put everything together to get the document frequency function working. Now, the score document function appears to be complete already, and search result queue is just a utility that's been done for us. So um, the idea is that when we run... When we run, we get this output. So let's just try running, shall we? Romeo and Juliet 209 and Little Women 4.28. So it looks like we are done with exercise one. <laughs>